I love Eric. It's like, we're coming after you, History Channel. That's right. 10 million. <laughs> we're coming. We're going to get you. Yeah, History Channel. They, they can't be the only one with uh, over 10 million subscribers on YouTube. That's right. I don't even know what they're at right now, but we're coming for you anyways. Welcome to Talk With History. I'm your host, Scott, here with my wife and historian, Jen. Hello. On this podcast, we give you insights to our history-inspired world travels, YouTube channel journey, and examine history through deeper conversations with the curious, the explorers, and the history lovers out there. Happy 2023. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Jen. So this is our first video of the new year. This is the first video for us on Walk With History of 2023. So we're recording this kind of as a retrospective for 2022, we're going to go over our top 10 most viewed videos of 2022. These are the ones that were actually published. We actually had some that kind of popped off that were published a little over a year ago, like our Arlington 2 video, but so published, in published in 2022. And kind of we're going to go from 10th most viewed all the way up to number one. Yay! This is a fun timestamp. I think we, I want to do this every year because it'll be fun in a year, two years, three years, five years. To revisit. To look back and be like, hey, look at 2022. We were at about 7,700 subscribers right now. Yeah. So thank you to all our subscribers yeah. out there, yeah. to our community. I mean, that's really what we should lead off with is, is thank you to you guys. This is so much fun because you guys interact with us, because we get to meet you, we email, we exchange remarks in the comments and it's just a ton of fun like even there's there's tommy right there in the comments hey tommy hi tommy um, and you guys give us great ideas tuskegee airmen at arlington was an idea yeah that was from someone from who a viewer so from, from a viewer that was a great one and honestly i really enjoyed that video our, our 10th most viewed video of 2022 is actually our last video of 2022 and yes. that was that was christmas in colonial williamsburg yes it's it's great how that's like popped up with being with having a lot of views, but I think people like to look at Christmas time. They like to look at videos of Christmas time. And, and that was a video that we'd wanted to do for a while. Sure, because Williamsburg, it's something special that they do and it's different and it's fun and it's nostalgic. And so we got to go there and show you what it looks like at Christmas time, how it's decorated at Christmas time. And we did the grand illumination. Which you can only see it three times a year and it's only at Christmas time. Yes. And... We wanted to do that. We actually had to go back with yeah. the kids to to do that. So that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It's, I think it is a good family event. Five to seven, the first three Saturdays of December in Colonial Williamsburg. And the weather wasn't too bad. I mean, us moving from Erie, Pennsylvania to Norfolk, Virginia, we the winter is milder. And so you can be outside and actually put fire off fireworks and it was a lot of fun yeah and actually tommy your comment in the he asked if we can do antietam so we're going to talk about a couple of things that we have planned coming up this year so that's potentially on on the list of things that yes. we that we want to do so we'll talk about that at the end if you want to stick around for things that we have planned for 2020 yeah we'd love some ideas give us some ideas yeah so that was number 10, that was number 10. which is pretty cool because even though it was our most recent video it did pretty decently right up front Number nine most popular video for us in 2022 was His Name is Dr. Mudd, The Lincoln Assassination. So that was a neat one to do because I was driving to you. You were in Newport yeah, for, for work. work. And I was driving to you with the kids and I took a back road to D.C. And I drove by a sign that said, assassin, yeah. demise, died here, died something. here. And, that's, and I stopped and I backed up and it was where John Wilkes Booth was. Yeah, you were like driving down the freeway. <laughs> it's not freeway, freeway, but yes, yeah. yes. And so I knew Dr. Mudd was close because if you know the story, you know that Dr. Mudd helped out John Wilkes Booth. He didn't make it far from there. So we went to the Dr. Mudd's house. If you watch the video, it wasn't open. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That was That was actually a fun video and it did better than I expected, but I think we did a good job of really telling the story of how involved Dr. Mudd actually was. Sure. And what the what the evidence points to with Dr. Mudd, there is a lot of controversy. And as you can see in the comments from that video, there are people who take different sides. Yeah. And you, we were able to go to Dr. Mudd's grave. And that church where he's buried at is the place where he met John Wilkes Booth for the first time. Before the assassination. Before the assassination. And then we talk about what happened to Dr. Mudd after yeah. 
And so it was a very interesting story and it was cool to be there. And again, you can kind of see the path that... And you stopping at that sign on the side of the freeway actually worked really well with the with the story and, mm-hmm. and telling that because not far from there was there was some family that kind of helped John Wilkes Booth at, at one point in time. Yeah. And so we'll do more of that story because yeah. what's significant is the family that John Wilkes Booth stays at and then they eventually tell him to go in the barn because they're worried about all the 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 atmosphere that's starting people are searching for him and they tell him to go stay in the barn and that's when he's eventually killed that family the son of that family is buried at one of these local cemeteries here in Norfolk so I'm going to go to that grave and tell you that whole story because that family his life was very impacted by that. Even though they really had no say, John Wilkes Booth had a, was armed when he came to their house and requested assistance. And they helped him because they felt compelled and wanted to save their lives. That family actually paid for it the rest, rest of their lives. Yeah. Yeah, so that that was that was a cool video, and I like the opening, right? We opened with a scene from National Treasure talking yes. about Dr. Mudd, so that was, that was fun. Was Mudd. So moving up the list, number eight, it was actually a first of two videos we did as a collaboration with JD from History Underground. And so this was the Women of Arlington National Cemetery. Yeah, that was a great one to do. It was great to do with JD. We pivoted that day. We had planned to do another video, which we still have planned to do. And we we couldn't do that one. We couldn't have access that day. So we said, why don't we just go to Arlington? There's so much to do at Arlington. There's so much so much subject matter. And there's a woman's museum at Arlington. And so we went in there and actually JD was recognized. Yeah, yeah. So so the JD had already been filming in the area. Mm-hmm. He was doing a, a trip out east. JD from the History Underground. From the History Underground. And so we met up with him. We had kind of planned this in advance. And this was the day after you got back from London. Yes. So she had just spent two weeks in London. She had been filming every day, just going 100 miles an hour. She flew back slept home that night and that next morning we got up and we took the kids and we drove up to DC to meet up with JD and it it ended up being really fun and so we got to visit the the women's memorial and talk about some significant women who are buried at Arlington and i think it was great for JD being a a female veteran I gave a different perspective. I kind of put him on the spot, asked him how he felt about women in the military. I love doing that to guys. And uh, it was a really a great video. I love collaborations. I love collaborating with JD. We have kind of known each other since our both of our channels were kind of in infancy. Yeah. So it's kind of neat to see his channel really has taken he's, off. He's amazing. If you haven't checked out History Underground, go check him out because his, his videos are, are, are really, really good. He's a fun. great historian and just a really great person. And yeah. we love collaborate, collaborating with him. Yeah. So, so that was, that was a really fun one. And speaking of London, so just a few days prior to that is our number seven video. And that was the Churchill War Rooms. Fantastic. That's, that's honestly probably my favorite video that turned out after I edited it because you edited it so well with Churchill's speeches. Voice, yes. And so Churchill's speeches really gave a lot of atmosphere as you're walking through these war rooms. So if you don't know the history here, this is where Churchill basically managed World War II underneath the ground of London and how they set this whole place up to be efficient and protective during the Blitz because basically they're getting bombed every day, any time, and they need to keep running the war and being efficient and keeping the intelligence as fast, keeping it going as fast as possible. And they had not changed it. So they shut off, when the war was over, they had shut off the lights in these war rooms. And these are like underground bunkers. And they just didn't clean anything up or do anything. I think people they were just, just... They just left it alone for like 60 years. They were just exhausted, I yeah. think. And they were like, okay. So what it was neat is they were able to just turn back on the lights, leave things as they were, glass certain, them Certain up, things, certain sections of it. And just give you the story. Yeah. And, and, and I think that video, it did so well. One, because... World War II, right? World War II is a very popular topic in the history niche in on YouTube. And two, like you said, we were able to incorporate, and I'll, I'll, I will say it was actually really difficult for me to do because it's much easier if I'm there with you filming sure. these videos. I found in some of the archive places online old recordings yeah. of Churchill giving some of his famous speeches. An interesting story, so to kind of look a little bit behind that, 
we actually had a, a significant copyright claim against that because there's certain media companies that own the rights to those speeches, like the Martin Luther King speech, to, or certain portions of it. And I was actually able to dispute that because we're doing this for fair use and I was doing this for educational purposes, right? We're an educationally focused yeah. channel. It was nice to be, kind of be able to dispute that. This is fair use. We're showing people, we're educating people about mm -hmm. what happened in World War II and, and what the English did. And the, just the, the, the war rooms themselves were really, really neat. I think that even I would have enjoyed yes. going there in so person. So my suggestion is it's, it's a popular attraction in London. If you're going to do it, I did not buy tickets beforehand. I recommend you do that. I was just the first person in line when it opened. Yeah, she got there early. And I got there early. And a lot of people take tour guides with them. I've no I noticed you really don't need them. You can read the stuff on the side or do your research before you go. But it was really neat to be there early so then I could film and they let me film everything, which I really appreciate about them as well. Yeah. So that 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 one turned out way better than I expected by the time I got it done. There's just certain shots in that that I just really to, to even now, just really am proud of. Yes, and um, that Churchill drank whiskey every day. Yeah, yeah. And I brought him home a bottle of the Churchill whiskey. I still have to try that. I still have to crack that open. <laughs> so if we're moving on from there, it was actually a little bit older video. Again, it was kind of when you were coming up to visit me mm -hmm. up in the Rhode Island area for that work trip, was visiting the real Sleepy Hollow. It was amazing. I mean, as you're, if you're a kid and you watched the Disney Legend of Sleepy Hollow with Bean Crosby narrating. The story of Ichabod Crane. The story of Ichabod Crane has really lived in my heart since I was a child. I wanted to see it and yeah. be a part of it. And it was so neat to go to the Sleepy Hollow Cemetery. You get to see the bridge, the entire story that Washington Irvin dreamed up. And there were, there's some history throughout it, like the Headless Horseman was actually yeah, in the it's, it's semi -historically, revolutionary soldier. Yeah, it was a historical ghost kind of ghost story. And where Andre was captured having the plans for West Point is where Ichabod Crane first encounters the Headless Horseman. Yeah, and it was neat for me when we go back, went back and made the video, and I, I show you along a map kind of where he would have met the Headless Horseman mm -hmm. and the, the path that he took. It's basically the main drag. It is. This is the main right? drag, he's, which he's kinda, in the time would be right, because yeah. that's the main path. Um, but it was just neat to see that on the path, right? Hey, here's all these points yes. where it shows this in the cartoon and that in the cartoon and this, that, and the other, <laughs> right? So where that where the house was and they had the party and he's telling the ghost story and yeah. singing, yes. right? And then when he takes exactly. off and goes across the bridge to the church yes. and, and all that stuff, mm -hmm. that was that was a, just a fun, it was a fun, fun video. Yeah. And it kind of took off. I mean, not long around, not long after kind of Halloween ish, mm -hmm. right around. Which then. again, I think people really want to learn about something that's significant. Yeah, there. and that's something that's timeless. I, I think that that video will age pretty well. So from there, we're breaking into our top five now. Top five. So top five, and this one I was not surprised that it did as well as it did. Was another London video, another England video. Was Major Dick Winters and the Band of Brothers in in England before D Day? Yes, and I. This is something that hadn't been done before, and I, I, it was really significant for me to do. Band of Brothers has been done a lot on it's YouTube. Very, um, very popular. Very popular. But I really wanted to dive more into Dick Winters and his motivations. You're leading men into war and what his life was like, the buildup for that and how he kind of prepared for that. And so his time in Aldeborn, which is where they were before the D-Day landing, he had spent some time with a civilian English family and they were very significant to him. And I wanted to pay my respects to them, their grave in Aldeborn and tell more of that story. Yeah, the, and we show some clips from the Band of Brothers mm -hmm. series of where in the in the series that would have taken place in Aldeborn, right? Mm -hmm. Cuz they spent like 8 months oh, there. Oh yeah. That's what before D-Day. So they were there for a very long time like really living with these families. Um and so we should kind of show clips of that and it was neat because I think the one thing that you did that's unique from some of the other stuff that I've seen on Band of Brothers was talk about how Dick Winters said this place and this family and that time there was so transformational for him and he's a well-known real life character mm -hmm. as well as a character in the series yes. right? he's the like the primary character yes and i think it's significant for scott and i both officers in the military leadership what, it, what does it take to lead people into combat 
And Dick Winters really makes it about the simplicity of life. And I, I appreciated that. Yeah, that that was a new one. And I wasn't surprised it was going to do well. I think anything that you kind of threw out there with Band of Brothers on YouTube, there's lots of people looking for that stuff. So that was a fun one. The, the next video on our list, number four of our top 10, was actually the one another fun one for us was the history of Army Navy surplus stores since 1946. Yeah, that is so cool. So Norfolk has a, an Army Navy surplus store that we would drive by all the time. And it's been here since 1946. And we stopped in and I just thought it was the most amazing place. Lots of history everywhere. And I asked if I could make a video and they were they were all for it. And so just to learn about what was surplus and how did that happen and how they keep going and kind of the artifacts they get in now and the things that you can find in a surplus store and just the great stories and 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 just the the so the store owner or mm-hmm. owners right Larry and his sister Laura yes they were like super accommodating and Jen had actually kind of connected with them through their daughter who she'd followed online and and again good, from a production standpoint it was fun to just go and film there yes because there's so many interesting things to see and then Larry had some great stories about different artifacts and we're considering kind of reaching out and maybe trying to do more video pieces on on things there because they have um, some very they, interesting very artifacts. interesting things m and g sales in norfolk they've been around since 1946 and then just to understand i wasn't quite sure how surplus came about but if you can understand the the ramp up for the war and all the stuff that was made for the military and then the war ended in 1945 and they had all of this stuff it became surplus and that i thought was fascinating and then how it gets sold and people want military grade well and and just who some of their customers are so they get a lot of theater Mm -hmm. right because they need props and costumes and uniforms and things like that so that was really fun and the kids loved it there and larry was really great with madison our daughter because she asked him like literally i think a million questions she loves it and he just he loved it so we've gone we've gone back a couple times i think we actually went and brought him some some christmas cookies yeah so they're, they're, they're great people there. So that was number four on our list. Number three, we're breaking in the top three top for three. our top 10 videos of 2022 was actually, again, our second collaboration video with JD from the History Underground. It was the same day, same trip, was the Arlington House Tour. So again, we pivoted. We went to Arlington. There's a lot of history there that needs to be told. Yeah. And Arlington House had been closed previously for other videos because of COVID. And this day it happened to be open and we got so lucky. Arlington House is Robert E. Lee's plantation before the Civil War. And Robert E. Lee is married at Arlington House. This is the place that he leaves from, his wife will leave from. Yeah, so before it was Arlington National Cemetery, It was his home. It was his home. And we tell the story like the Lee, Robert E. Lee has married into George Washington's family. Robert E. Lee's wife, Custis, Mary Custis, is a descendant of George Washington. And that's why this land is prime real estate in Washington, D.C. It overlooks the Potomac. It's on a hill. You have a great vantage point of D.C. It's because George Washington was like, I want this land and I like it. Now, he didn't build on it. It was a it was an ancestor of his that built on it. But she inherited the house. When Robert E. Lee marries her, he inherits the house and then they're married there. So it was very neat to see that history and walk around that house. And they had, I think they had like a surprising amount of like original like furniture and stuff oh, yes. like that. Furniture, artifacts. I, that actually kind of surprised me for, for how much, what is what like has gone on there, mm-hmm. right? Especially like how long that's been around and then- Kind right. of ransacked during yeah, the Civil War. Yeah, ransacked during the Civil War. And in the video, we get we show kind of like an old, you know, 1800s era photo. And then we show a today photo. Mm-hmm. And it looks pretty much the same. Yeah. Now, obviously, they've maintained it. And they have other stuff that they displayed behind it, talking about Selena Gray and so some of the slave they make enslaved sure she's quarters. They a significant part of the story. Yeah. So because she... Yeah, the her, the enslaved saved a lot of the artifacts because they were left behind, and they saved a lot of the things that are there. Yeah, so that was that was our number three most popular viewed video, and I think it's part of it was JD kind of gave us like a, a big old shout out on he his did. channel, and great. and he pointed to that video 
right? And I think we released that video like abnormally on a Sunday mm -hmm. because that's like Sunday evening or afternoon because yeah. JD had posted his on Sunday morning. Yes. Um, so we were trying to take advantage of a friend of ours who's like at an incredibly popular channel. So that was that was just a ton of fun. And it was fun to do it with JD. And again, from a production side to kind of see his video and how he does things and mm -hmm. stuff like that was really cool. It was neat. So, all right. So now we're into the in the top two. And these these two videos have just had kind of nice long legs sure. all the way through the year. They were probably two of our earliest videos. I think they were published in like right in January and February yeah. of 2022. So number two on our list is Historic Jamestown, Virginia. And I think, honestly, this is one of those ones that's just very searchable because we did a good job of just kind of showing a little bit of everything that you can find at Historic Jamestown. When people are searching like, hey, I'm going to be in Jamestown or I'm going to go do the whole Colonial Williamsburg area. The Triangle. The historic they're going to look up our other video in Colonial Williamsburg and then they're going to look up Jamestown. So what's interesting about Jamestown, and I'll talk about this a little bit, we, you have the Historic Triangle where we are. So what is the Historic Triangle? It's Williamsburg, Yorktown, Jamestown. They call that the Historic Triangle because they're all very close in proximity. Jamestown has like two areas and you can kind of get confused about them. Jamestown has a museum where they recreate what Jamestown would have looked like. They tell you the story of Jamestown. You can walk through and you're like, oh, is this Jamestown? No, that's not. <laughs> so the National Park Service actually has the actual location. And if you go to the actual location, it's not really recreated to look like Jamestown because it's still an active dig and they're still looking for things. But they do have a great big statue there of um, John Smith. And they kind of have the outline of the church where Pocahontas was married. And they have, they have found some bones and they've recreated some colonial lives. Jane is one of them. And so there's a kind of museum off to the side that tells that story. And that is Jamestown. That is the actual location where the settlers first touch ground. That's where they meet Pocahontas and her family. And, and this is the years of living and surviving that's the location the recreation of jamestown museum is made to look how that would have looked but it's not on the actual spot and they're two separate locations you drive to separately so i think when we we were confused at first we stumbled upon it and, and so and so i remember actually someone remember. actually commented kind of like upset with us on that video mm -hmm. saying like hey this isn't historic jamestown this is the recreation and we kind of looked and we're like, oh, yeah. So I actually tweaked, I think I tweaked their, mm -hmm. our, our title yes. uh, because I, I just wanted to be factually correct. And it was great because I think, if I remember correctly, I went out there on my birthday in yeah. December alone and kind of saw it all. I'm like, oh, we need to make a video from mm -hmm. here and then brought the family and did it. And, yeah, so and, it, and honestly, like the, the first one we went to, the one that in this particular video, like the museum there was great. Like the great. whole, the displays, I mean, they, they go all out. It's really, really nice. And you can interact again with the figures there and you can ask them questions and they know their history and so it's just really great to have that the kids loved it they got to learn how to like make flour yeah i mean i think that video has probably had a few thousand views which for our channel right now before we explode i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna put it out there there's there's lots of stuff in the jamestown area colonial williamsburg area they're always kind of discovering something new or Hey, something was we thought was here, but it's actually over here, mm -hmm. right? So that's why they actually have they have active digs in Colonial yeah. Williamsburg and Jamestown and all that stuff. It's super so neat to see them too. It's super fun. Let's talk about the number one most popular video for for ours in in 2022, and I think this is actually pretty appropriate because it was right around our anniversary. It was our anniversary. It was an anniversary trip, and then we had actually made like we had done our very first live stream. Mm -hmm actually before this video was published and probably this, in that house some of you were there yeah you guys so I, I think some of you guys were actually on our very first live stream and that was february of 2022 so it was little almost a year ago now but that was staying in a colonial home in williamsburg and again i think this is one of those ones from just a kind of production side that people are looking they go to youtube and they go to google and they're like, hey, what's it look like? What's it like to stay in a home in Colonial Williamsburg? Should I stay in one? Sure. And our video, I mean, it's got almost 10,000 views. And because I think people are looking for that. And that was a special occasion because it's... Our 15th. Yeah. It's, I'm sure you it's, forgot. It's not, it's not <laughs> inexpensive. We'll put it that way. Yeah, 15-year anniversary. So 
I've had a lot of comments on there saying, I didn't know what the inside looked like. Thank you for posting this. And that's kind of what we were going through too, looking for a colonial house to stay in, which you can, they, they give you options, but you don't know what they look like. Yeah. And, so, and some of them are like, like joint units yeah. or they're, they're super small, super small, or they have, they're just like the kitchen that's kind of been recreated to look, that, that makes it look like a home. Or you can stay in like the bigger houses that have like hotel rooms. But then um, it's like joint bathrooms. Yes. And stuff like that. But we got the whole house and nobody had made a video from the house to kind of show you this is what the house looks like. And these are what the rooms look like. And this is what's, this is what the bathroom looks like. And so we did a whole kind of tour of the house. And this home was... Martha Washington's, Martha Washington's I think, grandfather's or father's or something yes. like that. Yeah, he rented grandfather's it. Grandfather's they He had like rented it out. It was one of his properties. Yes, yes. So. And so that was the, so Martha Washington would have been around there and visited. So it was very neat to stay in that home. And you're right there. Like we were right across the street from the Colonial Williamsburg Inn. Right. And we had a fire made. You can have fire made. They can, they will make a fire in the home if it's less than like 40 degrees outside or something. But no one else had done that. And we take you on a step-by-step -step through the whole thing. And I think a lot of people appreciate that before they stay. In sure. Houses. Yeah, like, they want to see. see like, hey, is it worth the money that I'm spending? Yes. Or My whole it, family will be comfortable. Is it, is it big enough, right? The, the particular place we stayed in, we went a little bit bigger just because we wanted to, to try something special. Mm -hmm. And you, the family of, you probably could have had six, seven people stay in that place yes. pretty comfortably. Yes, it was great. So that was that was a ton of fun. So that that was our our, our top ten videos of of 2022. And again, really, a, this is a fun experience this year. It wasn't our most viewed videos of of the year, but the ones that were published. I think our most viewed video was our second Arlington video, which kind of caught some steam in, in the summertime. But this is largely due to you guys, to to our viewers, to our community and and we want to thank you guys because we love having you guys here on the live streams that you guys know we're going to try to do a little bit more regularly and we just absolutely love doing this and this is a passion project of ours i was telling jen i, I we both work full-time right now and while the the break the christmas break for us was was nice because it, it is work to put the channel on i missed the production i missed interacting with the community so i hope you guys all had had a great christmas now we are going to talk about next year this next year. year so so let's give what what are a couple things that we have planned without kind of laying it all out there what are what are some things we have on the on and if you have any suggestions please put yep. them in the chat but some of the things that we're super excited about we definitely want to do monticello yep. uh, we live close and we need to get out there and show everybody what Monticello looks like. We are going to do the loving case. So that's kind of important to me. That's interracial marriage. The, the, the lovings were the first to go up against the Supreme Court. And they are here. They, they're from here in Virginia. So we're going to do that story, which I think it is a great story for, of American history. We are planning to go out west. We are. We've got a, a family reunion out west, and then we're going to kind of continue that trip. And we're, I don't think we're going to make it all the way out to the coast, but there's going to be pl plenty of Western history coming up. And so one of the things I'm so excited about is the John Wayne Museum. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a huge John Wayne fan. We're definitely going to do Battle Little Bighorn. We're going to do Crazy Horse, Mount Rushmore. I'm just looking forward to all of that history. I, I, I think some people know that I grew up in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and I just was really immersed in American Western history in high school. And I won History Day in high school. You did? <laughs> I did. I don't think I knew that. <laughs> and so I Shocker. just love telling those Western stories. And so we're going to get out there and do some of that. So we're really looking forward to that. But we definitely need to go on the Wisconsin. Yes. And we're both sailors and we need to bring you a Navy ship. Yeah, I think so we need to. We actually element. we we actually met someone. I think he found our podcast first. Mm -hmm. Talk with history. But our a follower of our a friend of ours, Doug, who we converse with every now and then, 
has kind of offered, he actually works as a tour guide on the Wisconsin. So we're, that is a goal. We will get out there maybe when it warms up a little bit, because he said it can be pretty cold in the Wisconsin in the wintertime. <laughs> So, so maybe as it starts Metal. warming up, war, war, warming up a little bit, yeah. but we will get to the USS Wisconsin, one of the last just huge battleships. It's really cool. We, we, we drove by it at Christmas time and had all these Christmas lights on it and stuff like that. Yeah, so. and I'm sure you like that, that's our element. Yeah, we'll be able to tell you a lot of things, naval things, like just jargon and what's it like to be on a navy ship and what are the things you hear and what do things look like and how do you get from the spaces and so that'll be fun for us, but. We had someone say Antietam. We're definitely going to do some more Civil War. We live close. We're in, we're in Virginia. So we'll take advantage of it. We're going to Vicksburg, Antietam. De- I wanted to do Va- Valley Forge. Missed out on it last year. Definitely want to do some more George Washington and Valley Forge. Appomattox. We're close enough to Appomattox. We, we may have an overseas trip. And it's probably more gen trip than anything else because we're trying to take advantage of having friends stationed in overseas st- in overseas mm-hmm. spots who say like, hey, who wants to house it? So we'll we'll see how those plans firm up. But again, that that may be a, a gen solo trip for a week or we'll see. But that would be a very different kind of history if we get a chance to do that. So we'll drop some more hints, maybe in our Patreon page or something like that. If yes. you go to Patreon and, and look up Walk With History. Su- just, if you have any um, suggestions, so. please let us know. We love hearing what would interest you. And uh, I love looking it up and talking about it. There will be some more aviation history as well. I can't get away from it. And I love it. So definitely. I love to get out to an air show and give you give a whole overview of the different types of aircraft yeah. and just air show. We we had aviation. one th- there was an air show this last summer we were going to try to go but we were I think we were both just feeling like super run down. I think I had been sick or yes. something like that. And so we didn't make it out and that but that would have been a fun video. So that's still on the docket for us. Not only just an air show type video but some some other stuff that we're going to try to sprinkle in there. I think it would be a really really fun video topic. So I'm, I'm really excited for 2023 and not just because of the videos that we have planned, but because I know that our community is slowly growing and you guys are a huge part of that. I love Eric. It's like, we're coming after you, History Channel. That's right. 10 million. <laughs> we're coming. We're going to get you. Yeah. History Channel. They, they can't be the only one with a History Channel with uh, over 10 million subscribers on YouTube. That's right. I don't even know what they're at right now. But we're coming for you anyways. I really do enjoy the community. Whether you're a, a general subscriber here to us on YouTube, whether you're a patron on our, our Patreon page, if you look up Wathco History on Patreon, we really appreciate the support there. We actually don't make too much from it because we try to give it back to our patrons, whether it's a fun sticker or other things that we try to do. We So we, we, we try to do our best and, that, and that's kind of where I come from at this is I want to share these stories with with you guys and with other people. And we want to take you we want to take folks there. We want to take people to the location, to the location, to the location right here. This is where this amazing event happened right here. This is where so and so was born mm-hmm. right here. This is where John Wayne is is buried. Right. Yes. Who doesn't want to go visit that? And, and right here is where Dick Winters saw the, the Barnes family that helped that gave him a place to stay and and gave him the sol- the solitude and the time that he needed to to lead men into D-Day. So, I it's just great to to be there and to see what they saw and we feel closer to these history makers that we yeah, know so much about. A- absolutely. And it, and it's a fun thing to to do and to show people how, how that they can do the same thing, right? That's what we want to encourage. We're super excited about 2023. We're super excited for our community to kind of keep growing and for you guys, our supporters, to, to kind of spread the word. And we, we really do appreciate everything that you guys do. Yes, the thank comments you. on all the videos. We, we, re- all we the read comments. all the comments. We try to reply to as, as many as we can. I think we get to pretty much all of them unless they, there's some spam ones that get out there. But we're not, we're not big enough to get anything super crazy like what JD does or some, yeah. of, some of the other folks. But um, it's just an absolute blast. And so, so thank you again thank you. Uh, for doing that. Yeah, we had a great 2022. We're looking forward to 2023. Thank you for being with us on this. And of course, give us any suggestions you may have. But thank you so much. 
we appreciate you walking with us on these history journeys. Thank you for listening to the Talk With History podcast. And please reach out to us at our website, talkwithhistory.com. But more importantly, if you know someone else that might enjoy this podcast, please share this with them, especially if you think that today's topic would interest a friend. Shoot them a text and tell them to look up the Talk With History podcast because we rely on you, our community, to grow. And we appreciate you all every day. We'll talk to you next time. Thank you.